All right, guys, Red here. A very big welcome back to Red Resort. We've got another 10 things you didn't know about Star Citizen lined up. You know the rules. If you know them all, then leave an 07 in the chat. But if we get you with any you don't know, please feel free to leave a like and possibly subscribe. I will say this time we're possibly scraping the bottom of the barrel here. This will definitely be the last one that we do. <laughs> These are all the bits and bobs that are kind of being left over from the other two videos. And I just thought it would be a waste to just throw them away. So I've clumped them all together and shoved them out the door regardless. So I'll be expecting a few more 07s in the chat than normal this time. But just in case, let's go on with it. First off, we've got a wee two for one. These are pretty well known and pretty short, but they might help some of the new guys starting up and coming into the game. If you press left mouse button on an unaware enemy, you can perform a takedown. But what I didn't realize until just recently is that if you press middle mouse button again, once they are down on the ground, you can finish them off. And by finish off, I mean no longer knocked out and completely dead and all the implications that come with that. Now, I did try and get some footage of this, but well, things got a bit star citizen on me and you know, let's just say the finishing move works, but the animation not so much. Next up is stripping a body, the absolute fastest way to do this. Maybe you're trying to recover your gear, for example, is just to get completely naked and move the undersuit from the body over to you and everything else that's equipped will follow along like so so most people will know that there's more than one way in and out of grim hex this used to be really handy if the main elevator had went full alpha and was trapping and or murdering innocent citizens just trying to go about their daily business but if you know where to look there are a few other secrets built into the notorious asteroid base if you head out from the main platforms and over the edge, tucked away in a dark corner is this little cave, and inside this little cave is a small habitation. These days there's something invisible blocking the way and you can't get in, and you also can't access any of these containers nearby, so the whole thing's kinda pointless. But it still could be a nice little meeting place for you and your criminal cohorts. In fact, there's also a lot of little glitchy nooks and crannies around Grim Hex for you to possibly get behind and see the inner workings of the place. And if you do go hunting, just remember to come back and let me know if you find anything. On Area 18 in the PTU, if you make your way to Dumpster's Depot, there's a guy outside looking like he's selling food. On closer inspection, however, this upstanding gentleman is a proud owner of Area 18's only pet store. You can pick up and interact with these little tortoise guys and you can even take them away with you and keep them as your own little ninja friends. I have no idea why this is only active in the PTU, but I'm sure there's a very valid and well thought out reason for it. Anyway, for the record, this guy assures me he's absolutely 100% not making any kind of reptilian related gourmet cuisine. Next up is running speed. So we did multiple runs over the same small track and took an average in various states of undress. And it turns out that being naked, in civilian clothes, wearing an undersuit, or wearing an undersuit with a helmet, all gave the same result of 5.1 seconds. A full set of light armour was only slightly slower with an average of 5.12. Medium and heavy armour, as well as a heavy undersuit like the Novichok set and the Novichok with helmet all gave the same result of 5.3 seconds. When you add a heavy backpack to that, it goes up another 0.12 seconds to 5.45. Making the backpack full has zero effect on running speed. Adding a pistol and one main weapon added another 0.15 seconds to the run. A full loadout of heavy armour, heavy backpack, multi-tool, some med pens, ammo clips and guns came out at around 6.1 seconds. So in conclusion, the armours have an effect but not really that much. What's in your pockets or in your backpack doesn't matter in the slightest. But what you have equipped on the outside of your body Guns, ammo clips, etc. have a really big effect, meaning if you have a secondary weapon it might be worth taking something that will stow in a backpack 
if you've got a long run planned. There's a lot more testing needing done on this and I will do so in the future where we'll take a look at how stamina is affected over a longer run etc. I don't know who knows this stuff but during some other testing I was doing I noticed you could spawn a whole ass hull A from the Platinum Bay Outpost ship terminals. I must admit I was really happy about this but I was also a bit confused given the numerous smaller ships that don't spawn here. Other ships that can be spawned include the Pisces CAR, the Pisces CAX, the Argo Personnel, the Argo Cargo, the Origin 100 series, the Origin 85X, the Razor, the M50, the Merlins, the Talon and the Talon Shrike, which was also very surprising. If you think I've missed anything, please let me know and we'll revise the list in the comments below. In case you're wondering why I'm going around Star Citizen testing things and interrogating the game for answers, that would be because I'm also going to be starting another series that is focused on citizen science where we answer the questions that need answering above all else. The burning questions in every Stanton spacefarer's minds, such as how many players will a tank shell pass through? How many grenades does it take to kill a C2? etc. As well as the more serious stuff like DPS, alpha damage, sustained versus burst etc. So if you guys have any ideas for that series I'd really like to hear about them down below. And that brings us to our next little nugget. Unfortunately, if you've been playing for any length of time the chances are you will know this one. But I was always curious myself as I'd never seen it done and with some new ships in the game I thought it might be worth investigating. And that's punching doors. Now I couldn't find anyone at the time to help out and I didn't want to punch my own ship in case it reacted differently due to me being its owner. So I stowed away in some poor guy's cutter toilet and at the appropriate moment I let the guy know that he was now under a reasonable amount of duress and he should land the ship outside the armistice zone and step outside. After showing the poor fellow what an absolute man's man I was by punching his back door in, I then paid the guy a hefty sum of credits for his inconvenience and we parted ways both being slightly more intellectually prosperous. So in the end, yes, you can still punch ship doors open, some of them anyway, and yes that includes the new cutter. Leave a comment below if any ship that you know can still be broken into by punching or shooting your way in and we'll make a master list and pin it. Here's one I got from a channel we all know and love called Voidy Vids. If you're looking for the most genuine, refreshing and hilarious Star Citizen content then you need look no further than the link I've left in the description below. If you watch No Other Game Does This and don't laugh until your actual ribs collapse then I'm afraid you've managed to watch it wrong. Please, for your own sake, head over there immediately after watching this vid and feast your starry little eyes until they fall out. I guarantee you that nothing I'm saying here is hyperbole and you will immediately return to thank me profusely. What he showed me is that once you've called your ship to your hangar using the terminal, whilst in the elevator on the way there you can go into your Moby Glass comms and call ATC. This will start opening the hangar doors saving you a bit of time. Especially when you realise they have once again put your tiny little ship bang in the centre of the biggest hangar available, calling into question their overall trust in your piloting skills. Next up we're headed over to Microtech. If you fly around the surface for long enough, you might eventually run into these particularly unique looking trees. They are a lighter green than most other trees and look a lot more bushy. These are Maru Ebony Trees and they grow a fruit called Golden Medmon. The Golden Medmon give you 23 nutrition points and 19 hydration points. They also provide a hydrating and energising buff that lasts for 40 minutes. These fruits respawn every 60 minutes or so and I'm not entirely sure but that might just be enough to keep you alive if you decide to set up a small camp out here. I've also heard that there are Putambu plants on Hurston as well that give out fruit but they are almost mythical at this point. But if anybody does have some coordinates I could follow, that would be much appreciated. In the same vein, if you fly around for an exceedingly longer time, in my case 
It was literally three hours every night for a solid two weeks, although I may have just been unlucky. You might eventually happen upon these white tree stumps. These stumps spawn the most extraordinarily rare fungus called Heart of the Woods, which should, in my opinion, be the most valuable resource in the game. The mushrooms will give you 31 nutrition points and are toxic, but no effect was observed as of 317.5. If anybody's interested, there's a short guide on my channel that will give you the pinpoint location of these four stumps. If you fly to Kudri Or on Daymar around Crusader, you will find what can only be described as a massive sinkhole-like cavern. This is a cool little landmark and the hole's big enough to fly a reasonable sized ship down. Apart from its obvious coolness as a place to hide from Imperial forces, it also features a nice little regular cave system for the usual cave related undertakings. This is just one of those locations that everyone should at least see once, and if you fancy making a bit of profit on the side, then I thoroughly recommend bringing a hand mining tool. One of the most popular destinations in Star Citizen is a little asteroid base called Grim Hex. If you ever find yourself in great need to get to Grim Hex as fast as humanly possible and a quantum jump is just not fast enough, go up to any station turret around the Stanton system and shoot it a few times with your ship weapons. It will return fire upon you and you will receive a tier 1 crime stat. If however you manage to get away, then log out and back in, you will have teleported to Grim Hex and your crime stat will be gone. If you're like me and you're a stinking little poor person, and I've always wondered what it must be like for all those monocle wearing toffs swanning in and out of these VIP exclusive areas, I have some very good news for you. If you just stand outside the doors and keep dropping boxes, eventually you should clip through the walls. Now, you can proceed to the fancy bar and continue to be refused drink by the highly judgmental bar staff, you absolute peasant. This will also work and a lot of other places, so if you find anything cool by being the slimy cheating heretic that you are, please let me know. And that's it guys. There are some other easter eggs lying around the game, like this bottle of Radagast here, which is a character from Lord of the Rings, or this Jean-Luc Champagne. I also noticed this bottle of cleaning fluid here, which is, as a Scotsman, giving me a little bit of fear of missing out. And also we've got these bottles of Cloud CT, which is Lando Fever Syrup. Relieves all symptoms of Lando Fever, and I've been told that that's a reference to a time when Disco Lando was high as hell. Anyway guys, that's all we've got. Apologies if that was a tad underwhelming compared to the first two videos. Remember to check out the Patreon. Remember to comment anything you think I've missed. Thanks for watching. 07 guys.